All right, what's up everybody? It's Dan the Bugman here, back with another bug video, and today is all about the brown recluse spider. I have found the absolute perfect location to do this video. I'm very excited about this video. This shed behind me is, I wouldn't say infested, but it has a, a very large population of brown recluse spiders. And for a few things about today's video, um, it's about 90 degrees, so just don't mind me if I start sweating a little bit, and it might start raining here in a second. Without further ado, let's get going. And before I completely get going with this video, I just wanted to say uh, I haven't been making a lot of videos recently. I've been super busy with work, of course. It's uh, bug season, as you can tell. There's lots of bugs out, so we're super busy, and I'm also in the process of purchasing and moving into a house so i've been dealing with that so just bear with me i've got five videos lined up within the next week hopefully two weeks i can get all these out um, they are jam-packed with content and i may even be doing a stepping on bugs video i'm going to be start doing more videos out in the field i think it makes a lot better content instead of just you know being inside of my house making these videos and just voicing over the videos i'm taking so i'm going to start filming on site so you guys can see what i'm doing and i can walk through you know everything that's going on out in the field as it's happening and that will require a little more planning on my part but i think the videos are going to get a lot better so with that being said um, the brown recluse spider this spider is very important pest species in this area so if you haven't heard of a brown recluse spider that's actually not too surprising because they are a regional pest i'll pull up a map here for you guys to see but basically Basically, they start down in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, up through Oklahoma, Nebraska, Kansas, and they come over to Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, down to Florida, and they don't go east toward Louisiana. Um, they don't go South Carolina, North Carolina areas either. When you look at this map, it may seem a bit odd at first, um, but I will walk you through exactly how this spider behaves, and you can better understand why they are picking certain areas to live in. Basically, they don't go too far north because they need something warm, so you're never gonna see any above, like, you know, midway across the country. But also, you don't see any on the east side of the United States. On the west side of the United States, temperature gets a little too cold with all those mountainous areas in the winter time, so they're not able to survive that. And then on the very eastern side of the United States, it actually gets too humid for the spiders to survive because, you know, I don't know why they chose this, but these particular spiders need um, dry and they need warmth. So, you know, you can see there's none in the Florida area, which is almost always infested with all kinds of bugs. But for this spider, that's too wet for them. They need something dry. And of course, Florida area is hot, but it's too wet. And they also aren't in the desert and mountainous areas because again, that's just too dry. So why are brown recluse spider species considered such a big pest for humans? Well, there are a couple of main reasons that are unique to this spider, but all in all, I wanna talk about spiders for just one second. For the most part, they're on our team. They help us catch insects. You know, they build these webs that catch insects and they keep, you know, flies and cockroaches and things like that from coming into the house. But that doesn't mean people still aren't scared of spiders. A study that I came across revealed that about 30% of people have a small case of arachnophobia, which is the fear of spiders. And simply, I think that just boils down to humans biologically are kind of afraid of like any creepy crawly things on the ground. So that makes sense to me. Spiders are very, very misunderstood and not all of them are really considered pests to someone like me, a pest control professional, but to the average homeowner, you know, they don't care. They just want them out of the house. So I understand. And brown recluse spiders are an exception for me. I also think they need to be eradicated from houses if there is an outstanding population of spiders in a house. So when I said a second ago that um, brown recluse spiders behave a little differently. So this is very true and that is why they are such a problem. But most spiders can think of like the average spider, you know, they build a web and they wait, you know, they're outside, they wait for, you know, flies and moths to fly in to the web and then they, you know, surround them with their silk and bite them and eat them and all that good stuff. And then there's other spiders like the wolf spider. Those spiders walk around on the ground. Um, they find, you know, ants or cockroaches or things and they're actively hunting and there's also a couple other species like this that behave in this way but these spiders they're what we call passive hunters okay they build a small a very small web around them and they wait for insects to come upon them and then whenever they do that's when they attack so they're not actively hunting that behavior is very important as to why this species of spider is a pest. Just to give you guys a quick example, I'm gonna go try to catch a wolf spider um, very quickly and show you guys what they look like. Um, they're always running around um, you know, in the yard and stuff, so it shouldn't be too hard to find one. So I'm gonna be right back and I'll show you what a wolf spider is. All right, so I did find a wolf spider. And like I said, 
They are very easy to find. They're active hunters, so they're always, you know, walking around looking for food. So that's why it was very easy to find one. If you see a spider in your house, especially in this area, Kentucky, that's where I'm at, but in this area, if you see a spider in your house, it's most likely a wolf spider. They're always searching, looking for food, and they always just happen to wander into houses. So I'll give you guys a little close-up look at this spider here. As you can see, um, it's very active, not happy. Not a happy camper. Focus it in here and open it up. See if we can get a good picture of them. So that's a wolf spider. To me, a wolf spider and a brown recluse spider are actually pretty easy to distinguish between each other. But to the average person, that probably does look pretty similar to a brown recluse. So we'll just get him real close there. Um, but yeah, he's doing a good, good pose for the camera. 99% of spider species are poisonous. Okay, that's, that's just how they, that's how they stun their prey and that's how they eat. So just because they are poisonous, that doesn't mean that they can bite humans. Okay, a lot of spiders, their fangs are not actually strong enough to pierce through human skin. So that's an issue, right? If you can't get through the skin, then there's no point, there's no you know, harm to humans because the spiders are meant to bite you know, insects, which are you know, very small. So since these spiders stay in one spot and don't move a lot, that means it's hard for people like us, pest control professionals, to truly treat this spider as it needs to be treated. They're kind of like bed bugs. If you don't spray them directly, then they're not gonna come in contact with the chemical because they don't travel, you know, they're not gonna travel through spots where we sprayed. So you have to hit them exactly where they live in order to get results. Studies have shown they've actually found like average size, you know, two, 3,000 square foot houses, having up to 2,000 individual brown recluse spiders inside a house. That's like one spider per square foot, which is pretty crazy to me. But when we go inside this shed, you're gonna see exactly how that is possible. So without further ado, let's get inside and show you what I'm talking about. Dun, 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 Oh my God! So let's go inside. All right, everybody. We are inside the brown recluse spider lair. I'm currently surrounded by maybe 25, 30 brown recluse spiders. And as you can see, I'm not freaking out. While I am sweating a lot because it's even hotter inside, uh, I am not freaking out about these spiders, okay? The reason I do these videos is just to educate people. I'm not trying to freak you out about these spiders. You know, I'm standing here with a bunch of spiders and just like most animals and things in life, like no one's trying to get you. Like they're not out trying to attack humans. They're just living their life. So if you guys are ever moving into a house that has set empty for a very long time, I mean, even a couple months, like a month or two, I would recommend just getting a general pest control spray just to get rid of any you know, spiders or ants or anything like that. So this building is no exception. As I talked about earlier, they like dry and they like hot. And I can attest, it's definitely hot in here and it's pretty humid outside, but it's not on the ground. This shed, it's lifted off the ground. So there is not a ton of moisture coming in. If you haven't figured this out yet, this isn't a house, this is a shed. But this area, um, it does remind you of something in a house. Any guesses? It's an attic, right? So. Brown recluse spiders are almost always populating an attic when they're in a house. Let's spotlight this particular corner up here. So as we get closer and closer and closer, you guys should see about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven skin shells. And some of them look a lot like the spiders, but they're just the skin, okay? And as these spiders grow, they shed their skins. If you go up into an attic and you see a bunch of those skins just hanging out, it's a pretty good sign that there are other spiders nearby. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna show you some of the spiders. They're not super hard to find, but there are a lot of the skin shells that are around them. So try not to get those confused. So I'll zoom in on some of the actual spiders and show you how they behave. Um, as you can see from some of these, they don't move much at all. There's one chilling right there in the corner. All right, let's find one that's a little more out in the open for you. There's a bunch of the shells over there. I don't see a spider over there though. There is one. I'm gonna blow on it and see if it'll move. See, it doesn't move much. It doesn't wanna move, because that's its home. There's the good one. All right, let's zoom in on this one. Focus, baby. All right, 
Um, and I will try to catch one of these in a jar so we can get a close up on it. There it goes. Um, but you see all these white parts? That's their, um, that's the webs that they spin. They're not very intricate at all, but they, uh, they, they just let the spider know when the prey is close so they can jump on it. So that, that spider right there that you're looking at, that's a very big one. That's probably a female. It looks like it's about to lay some eggs. Yeah, they don't move much, like I said. I'm sure there's one behind there. That's a pretty dense web. That one's probably been there a while. Let's see what else we can find. There's one in the corner. Just ran into the, just ran into that crack. They don't like this light either, so I'm sure that's kind of making them go away. Oh, there's a nice one. Now that's a big one also. Most of these are full grown. Oh, let me see if I can get something to poke it with. Um, these spiders are also called fiddle spiders. Yeah, they're pretty quick. All right, so there's, there's a few more spiders in here. I showed you guys kind of what it looks like. As you can see, they live in close quarters. There's probably about 30 in this shed, if I had to guess. I apologize if I wasn't able to film and talk very well. They are hard, it is hard to do when you're like looking for the spiders and, you know, again, trying to talk about them and process my thoughts and all these facts I know about them. But I'm gonna catch one in a little, one of those little containers and show you guys why they're called fiddle spiders, okay? So give me one second. We're gonna see if we can't catch one. And as I am catching the spider, I'm taking on some risk. So I would appreciate it if you could just smash the like button, subscribe to my channel. Of course, you can always comment. The YouTube algorithm loves comments. Just give me a like and a subscribe and I will be more than happy. All right, so I'm gonna to attempt to catch one so you guys can make fun of me while I uh, go around with my little, little can and try to catch one. Hopefully I don't get bit, but it is possible. Just something to note that only a um, small portion of people react with those big lesions on their skin. Most of the time it just swells up and makes a red mark. So if there's a chance I could react to it and get a big old, you know, whenever there's a lesion, it's a certain reaction that your body has to the, the poison and it will actually break down your skin cells. If that doesn't happen to everybody. Everyone reacts differently and that goes for for all insect bites and spider bites, everyone reacts differently. There's a big one right here. I'm gonna try to catch it. Um, the easy part is getting this over it. The hard part is getting it into the jar. So here goes nothing. All right, so it's definitely in there. What I'm going to attempt to do <coughs> is to drop it down where the spider's in it and then close this over it. Boom! Easy like Sunday morning. All right, so I've got a brown recluse spider. So if anyone wants to mess with me, just know that I've got a brown recluse spider. I've also got a bed bug in my room that I'm about to do a, uh, a bed bug video about. And uh, I will set them on you, so. Don't mess with me. I'm going to open it up so you guys can see the fiddle shape on its back. And you can see the general shape of the spiders because I do believe they are pretty easy to identify just based on their body shape and their leg length. That's just me, I've been doing this a while, but you know, if you can identify what these look like, you will be you know, better set to identify them if they are in your home. There it is, it's not moving much, but if you get really close, very, very close, even closer, you can see there's a fiddle shape on the front thorax of the spider, right next to its head, right in the middle where all of its legs meet up. Okay, that dark area, the, um, from this angle, 
the fiddle is upside down. So it's just like a guitar shape. And that's why they're called fiddle spiders. They cannot play the fiddle, as far as I know, but they might be able to. If there was a spider-sized fiddle, they might be able to play, but I doubt it. So, this guy, uh, I'm just going to throw him outside. Yeah! Alright everybody, so now that we've caught a spider and identified all these spiders in here as brown recluse, I'm going to do what I do best, and that is to kill them. I am a pest control professional, and I'm going to use just our general insecticide in a B&G can sprayer to spray the walls of this shed. And I'm quite frankly, I'm pretty curious as to how effective this treatment is going to be. Whenever we do a brown recluse treatment for a customer, there, there are many things that we do besides just this spray. But I believe that this spray, this is the general chemical that we use for all of our inside sprays. I believe that it will kill these spiders, but there are many theories that that is not true. A lot of people think that these spiders are much more hardy than the average spider or insect. And that may be true. They are, you know, one of the larger spider species and they are, you know, pretty unique. But I think personally that the chemical that I spray is going to kill them. So I am going to go get my sprayer and I'm going to spray inside the walls. All right, everybody. So I've got my sprayer. This is what we call the BNG. BNG. Um, like I said, it's got our general insecticide in it that we use for all of our inside sprays. All right, so I'm just going to pump it up here. Then I'm just going to spray the walls. Now that I've got that done, I'm just going to summarize things up as I'm spraying. Um, in general, like all insects, these spiders are not out to get you. You could live in a house with hundreds of brown recluse spiders your whole life and never have any issues with them. Oh, that was a big one over there. So that's good, right? But I wouldn't want to take chances. These are some of the few pests that you don't want to really risk it with. And it's also something you don't want to try to do yourself. I do a lot of things myself, so I'm never going to tell you not to try to do it yourself, but there's a lot that goes into a brown recluse treatment. But I would recommend getting some kind of treatment done if you think there are brown recluse in your house. And as always, you know, just let me know if you have any questions. Um, like, subscribe, comment, any questions you have. I will answer any questions about brown recluse spiders that you have. And I'm going to finish up killing these spiders, hopefully. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. So thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, there were probably like 10 spiders that just ran out from under there. All right, everybody, so we are um, 24 hours post-treatment of the shed, and I did get a haircut, um, but we've got some good news and bad news about the treatment. Um, the good news is for me that the chemical looks like it killed most of the spiders. Um, there are still some stragglers, but those are the ones I believe that I just missed and didn't spray their particular you know corner um and then the bad news is there are the dead spiders that one looks alive but it is dead um we can get a little closer view so you can really see the fiddle shape on their back especially that one in the middle and then see how long and skinny their legs are